Okay, so get this. What if your brain? Your own brain. Okay. Could be causing your cancer. Oh. Right. And what if we could treat it not through chemo, but by like changing your brain? Yeah. That's what we're diving into today. This is a wild one. It is a wild ride. It really is. And the I craziest think, thing. This is a good one. It is a good one. It is a good one. The craziest thing is this isn't like some, you know, right. lab somewhere that's. Not a research lab. Yeah. Yeah. It's way more interesting than that. There's one of our listeners. Yeah, one of our listeners sent this in. Who was like, hold on. It, and it really makes you think. Yeah. It really challenges. Like, what if cancer... The way we think about this. What if cancer isn't just, like, our cells going rogue? Right. What if it's literally, like, our brains being like, go, 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 go? Yeah, like bad instructions. Yeah. The brain sending out bad instructions. Bad instructions. And they took it even further. They did. They had this analogy. They did. They were like, hold on. To a heart attack. What if it's like a heart attack? Yeah. Like, you can have a heart attack from being stressed. Right. Stress. Which is your brain. Intense stress. Yeah, your brain sending a signal. Sends a jolt to your heart, causes a spasm. So what if cancer is, like, the brain being like... Yeah, what if your brain is just <sighs> stuck in panic mode? All the time. Just constantly sending out these distress signals. And your cells are just like... And it messes up. What are we doing? Cell replication, <sighs> which is... I mean, that's the fundamental... Process. They're like, we've got to go. Of cancer is... We're stressed. Uncontrolled cell replication. And then they were like... And then and then get this. Okay. Chemo yeah. is like taking a hammer to your computer when the software is glitching. Okay. It might shut down the problem, Okay. but it doesn't fix the code. You're not fixing the underlying code. You're not fixing the code. Which is a really... And that's the thing. Interesting way to think about it. They weren't just like chemo bad <laughs> they were like hold on maybe this is why chemo doesn't work as well right it's like we're looking at the wrong yes. we're looking at the wrong thing we're looking at the wrong thing we're looking at the symptom yeah not the cause it's like putting a band-aid on a bullet wound exactly yeah and they proposed an experiment which i thought was really interesting yeah. which is like using those fmri scans to look at people's brains brain activity yeah specifically the hippocampus and amygdala Okay. So for people who don't know. So a quick brain breakdown. Yes, a quick rundown. For our listeners. Because I did not know this. Your hippocampus is basically like your internal alarm system. Okay. It's constantly scanning for threats in the environment. Right. And then the amygdala is like the emotional amplifier. Okay. So if your hippocampus is like, oh, there's a tiger over there. Yeah. The amygdala is like, we need to be afraid right now. <laughs> right. Right. So this listener is basically saying, what if your hippocampus is like... What if it's just always on. always going off? Like yeah. it's stuck. And your amygdala's like, we got to be scared. Right. And then it's just amplifying that signal. Right. And it's just this. And it creates this feedback loop. Which is basically like anxiety, right? Yeah. Like that's what anxiety is. Which chronic stress and past trauma can do to people. So they're basically saying all that fear and stress. Could be. Could be messing with the signals. Right. That our brain is sending to our cells, making them go haywire? Yes. Like, it's telling your body to be in a constant state of fight or flight. Yeah. But instead of running from a tiger, right. your body's just stuck in overdrive. And so your cells are just like, we've got to be in overdrive. we got to go. Right. And that's mm -hmm. the cancer. Exactly. And then they were like, and, and here's the other thing. Scan people. Okay. Before, oh, before they have cancer. Before they're even diagnosed. To see what their brain is doing. Because then you eliminate the possibility that, is... that it's just the stress yeah. of a cancer diagnosis. That's so smart because otherwise you're like, well, are they stressed because they have cancer or is the cancer? Yeah, you're getting a very yeah. distorted. It's like trying to figure out if a faulty wire caused a fire or if the fire melted the wire. Yeah. You have to look at the wire before the fire. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So imagine. Imagine they do this massive study. Yeah. And they find a link. They find a link between... Between an overactive stress response and cancer. Which would... What a game changer. Be huge. That would be insane. That would be a huge game changer. Now I know what you're thinking. What about genetics? What about all the research? All the mutations. About DNA yeah. and everything. We're not throwing that out the window. No. Oh. But what if, what if... What if your brain... Could be influencing those mutations. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we don't know. That's a really interesting question. Yeah. Because there's this whole field yeah. called psychoneuroimmunology. Right. Which is a mouthful. Yes, it is. I know, but we'll break it down. Please break it down. We'll break it down. But I don't know what that word means. Don't worry. Okay. I gotcha. Thank you. And our, our immune system is like our bodyguard. Right. It's like going around and being like, you're good. You're good. 
you're good, you're out of here. Yeah, it's like our security detail. Yeah. It's going around making sure that there aren't... Getting rid of the bad stuff. Yeah, getting rid of the bad stuff. So what if? And what if stress weakens that? What if stress is like weakening our security detail? Right, because think about it. Yeah. If your hippocampus is sending all these signals, yeah. flooding your body with stress hormones, right. that can't be good. Yeah. Because it's like, imagine your security details just like... Right. Like, imagine if you were constantly yelling at them. All the time. We're going to get tired. They're not going to... They're going to be like, I can't, I can't. They're going to miss something. Yeah, they're going to miss something, for mm -hmm. sure. Right. So it's not that stress is necessarily causing the mutations, but it's like... It's creating an environment. Environment. Where those mutations yeah. can actually... Become a problem. Become a real problem. Right. Because we all have mutations. Yeah, we all have rogue cells yeah. that are that are going around. Floating around in our bodies. But our body hopefully is like, we're gonna take care of this. We got it. We got don't worry. Yeah. We're not gonna let it get out of control. But what if stress is like nope, you can't handle it. Right. Like it's off duty. It disables the security system. That's a good way to put it. Right. The listener used a different analogy. Okay. But I like yours better. Okay. We're like, it's the kindling. The mutations are the kindling, and then the stress is the spark. Ooh, I like that. Okay. Which I thought was very poetic. Yeah, it's a good visual. Yeah. Right? You can really see it. But I like yours, too. Okay. So we're not dismissing genetics. No. And I don't think our listener was either. Right. It's not an either or. It's yeah. just... It's adding a layer. Adding another layer. Which I think is really crazy. Because we've been so focused on, like... The hardware, right. like DNA, the cells. The cells, yeah. What about the software? Yeah, The yeah. brain yeah. that's controlling all of it. The signaling. Right. Right. So maybe it's not... The chip that's broken into your computer. Yeah, maybe it's just like a software issue. Maybe your operating system is corrupted. And what's so cool about that is, and then it's like, okay, well, what if we can... What if we could reprogram it? Yeah, what if we could just like change the software? Right. And they had some ideas. They did, yeah. So neurofeedback. Okay, tell us about that because that one's really cool. It's so cool. It's basically a way... Like brain training. Yeah, you're training your brain waves. In real time. In real time. It's like a video game for your brain. Yeah. It's super cool. It is really cool. So you're essentially teaching people to like calm down. Yeah, to calm down that hippocampus. Yeah, get it under control. So it's not sending out all those... No, 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 oh, we're good. We're good. We're yeah, good. All right. Everybody stand down. Exactly. And that's just one. What else? We've got neurostimulation. Okay. We're using. So that's like zapping the brain. Well, kind of, yeah. It's like targeted electrical or magnetic pulses. Okay. To kind of stimulate. So it's like a little. Certain areas. A little jump. Yeah. Instead of like a. You know what I mean? Right. It's not electrocuting people. No, no, no. It's very targeted. Yeah. Very specific. And that's being used for other things. Yeah. It's showing promise for things like depression, Parkinson's. <laughs> so why not? Then? So why not cancer, right? It's true. It's true. Why not? So we could be like... Instead of like, stop it being like, go this way. Right. You know what I mean? He's like a little nudge. A little nudge. In the right direction. Instead of, come on, buddy. A sledgehammer. <laughs> <laughs> and what I really like about all this is it's empowering. Yes. You're not just telling someone to like... It gives people agency. Yes. Yeah. It is empowering. Like, we're not just talking about treating cancer. We're talking about... Like actually healing yourself. Right. Like you are taking control. You're in the driver's seat. Of your own health. Okay. So we've got brain training. We've got the little zaps. The little nudges. The little nudges. Yeah. What about AR VR? Okay. Because that was the other one. They were like, what if? Okay. So I mean, AR VR. That sounds like sci-fi to me. It does sound like sci-fi. It does. But it's really not. Okay. Think about it. You oh. put on a headset. Okay. And it's like a beautiful beach. Okay. You can hear the waves crashing. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. The VR experience is designed to tack into your brain's, like, relaxation response. So instead of, like, battling stress. Yes. You're, like, tricking your brain. Exactly. To relax. You're you. giving it a vacation. Sign me up. Right. That sounds amazing. It sounds pretty good. Okay. So you're essentially like retraining your brain. Yeah. In a virtual world. That's wild. Yeah. What about augmented reality? Well, that's the other. Because that one I feel like is. Yeah, that one's even more. It's even more. Like integrated into your life. Right. It'd be like, what if your phone. Because it's not a full experience. Right. It's like little things. It's subtle cues mm -hmm. throughout your day that are just like. Like calming you down. Calming you down, yeah. Like you walk past a park and it's like. Well, it's chirping. Yeah. And like. But it's not really there. But that's not really happening. That's crazy. It's just your little AR thing that's like. 
Yeah. Giving you those signals. Like a little brain massage? <laughs> That's yeah. wild. It's wild. Like we live in the future. We do. We really do. But here's the thing. Okay. This all came from a listener. That's what blows my mind. Right. Like all of this way. Yeah. Started with one email. That's so cool. One question. It really shows you that like. Yeah. Big ideas. Breakthroughs. Can come from anywhere. They come from anywhere. So <laughs> sending us your questions. Breathe. Because you never know. Your question could be. It could spark a whole new. The next song. medical breakthrough. Yeah. We could be looking at. So thank you to all our listeners. Yes. Thank you. For sending us amazing stuff. For listening. And, and this has been such a cool deep dive. It has been a really. I love this theory. Interesting one. It's so cool. Yeah. And we will see you next time. See you next time.